And I'm back with the next game in the collection. And well, I got a couple people joining me today. If you haven't already guessed it, it is Roadshow. Williams Roadshow. So this game, yeah, picked up in uh, December of 2019. Um, bought it when I was living in the States. Uh, found this game at a collector in uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it was about a five hour drive from where I lived. So, and uh, yeah, the game was in uh, really good shape when I got it. It was a uh, from a fellow collector who unfortunately um, had gotten sick and he was selling off his collection. I didn't realize that until I got there, but um, he was uh, selling a bunch of machines. Actually, his friend was selling it for him. And um, yeah, it was in really good shape. Now, if you're not familiar with, uh, with this machine, this is a um, Williams wide body machine here from 1994. And it was one of two machines to use the, uh, the system they called Pinmation. Right, it's designed by Pat Lawler, same guy who did uh, Twilight Zone, Adam's Family, you know, Whirlwind. Um, yeah, he's, he's a legend in pinball. So he designed this machine and it was a follow-up to uh, Funhouse. But the theme of this machine is uh, it's construction, right? I mean, obviously they're wearing hard hats. Well, sort of. Uh, the object of the game is to actually destroy roads as you travel across the country. And um, it's got a, you know, a, a, a country music theme. Uh, you can see here on the, on the back last is uh, Carlene Carter. I'm not a big country music fan myself and Roadshow is probably not a machine I would have bought, but what happened was my wife, uh, you know, she loves country music. She really liked it, and um, she kept talking about Roadshow. So, you know, I did find this Roadshow, and, uh, and uh, you know, I consider it her machine, right? It was the first one that she really kind of went after, so. Yeah, the object of the game is, of course, you're, you're driving um, this bulldozer, and you're going across America, and you're smashing up roads. It's a four-flipper game. You know, your two flippers here. You got a little mini flipper here, kind of set up like Adam's family is, and then, uh, a flipper on the top left and you know lots of ramps as you see you got your two highway ramps here and this is a Pat Lawler uh, game so it's got the the typical Pat Lawler shot through the pop bumpers like Funhouse has and Twilight Zone and many of his machines and then you got a ramp back here uh, there is a diverter behind her head that will divert the ball either around and back out this way or it'll divert it behind uh, Ted's head all the way around the back corner of the machine and it comes out here so you have to be ready for that um, it does have a ball lock here this is um, well actually the ball lock is to shoot it in his mouth and the balls lock and then they get discharged out here on this lane uh, there's a spinner down here in that lane as you see and uh, yeah you got the small little lane here for the for the little mini flipper to go to the blasting zone uh, there's a skill shot here that you can pop it into on the on the initial launch. Um, lots of different modes, lots of different things to do. Really uh, a lot of fun. It's got a second uh, shooter here, second shooter rod like Funhouse has on the on the left side. And this one, um, it's called um, Flying Rocks. The mode is called Flying Rocks. It'll fall over here. And then depending on where you shoot it and, and if it falls into one of these holes, you'll either get a 5X uh, blast, which is here. So you'll get a 5X, I think, on, on each blast shot. Uh, Radio Riot is a little two-ball multi-ball that you can start. Uh, of course, the extra ball. And then if you go too far and go all the way to the top and you hit his head, uh, then I think you get 25 million points for that. Um, but really, you're you're trying to get one of these other ones, especially, of course, the extra ball and the Radio Riot uh, multi-ball mode there. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much uh, the lay of the land. All right, so we'll get the translate tool down here. I always call it a back glass. I don't know why. I always use the same terminology. And uh, just like... Twilight Zone and uh, other games of the area. It's got the panel that folds down. Uh, you can see I have LED the game. Um, I have some missing right now. I pulled them out actually for another machine I was working on and I need to make an order. These are actually all the flashers. Or no, excuse me, they're not flashers. These are just uh, standard 
um, standard 2SMD uh, sunlight light from Comet Pinball is what these are. But I need to make an order and then get this machine uh, back to 100%. And then these are just uh, slow or fast flashes. I can't remember which one. And these are also the web style. So um, this machine, I do still have batteries in. I just changed these about a week ago. I used the uh, reminder that Pinside has on it, and um, it'll it'll let you know. But I do eventually want to get a um, an NV RAM, non volatile RAM for this machine, so I can get rid of the batteries. Um, I've been keeping it as is for now. Here's that new ROM that I got from uh, from the uh, gentleman in Denmark who um, is the authorized uh, dealer of the um, licensed uh, dealer for Williams. And this machine does have a um, um, Rotten Dog uh, Fliptronics board here, flipper board. That was already in there when I bought the machine too, so it had been replaced in the past. But overall, yeah, I haven't had um, any problems really with this machine. Um, at least in the back class or in the, in the in the boards, you know, no. Um, I'm trying to remember if I even maybe I changed this connector, both of these, for the GI. Yeah, I did that when I first got the game because I was having some some lighting issues. I remember now. So both of these um, have been swapped. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and close this back up and we'll pop the play field. So. Yeah, this game has a bit of a slope to it, so this glass will come out right on its own. And uh, it is a big piece of wide body, wide body glass, so I do want to be careful here. The good thing about the, uh, the system is when you open the coin door, it just engages the uh, coils. So the flipper mechanisms, all the coils are de-energized. All right, well, I got the play field popped up on Brochu here, and it's a bit unwieldy because it is a wide body, and. Um, as you see here, I, I, I have this pole that I use, this bar. It's actually a, uh, it's actually a, a shower curtain rod is what it is. And I really like it down here because um, when you use this rod on the side, it, it tends to flex the play field and twist it. I really don't like that. The play field always seems like it's canted over on an angle. This here, I can put the stress right up here in the center of the, of the play field. And it always seems a lot more stable like that. So that's something I like to do. And these are inexpensive. You can pick these up for 10 bucks or something. So yeah, you see down here in the, uh, in the road show, it does have a shaker motor. Of course, it's been jumpered here for, um, for European voltages. Pretty um, complicated lock system down here. If you take a look down here, um, this is the trough that goes under uh, Ted's head, right? Here's the sector gear that, that moves his jaw. And um, while I'm talking about that, you see I have a bit of uh, black tape over here. This is one uh, modification I had to do um, because this sector gear would travel a little bit too far and the, the pinion gear would come off the end of the tooth and then the, the, his jaw would get stuck. So I found a simple solution to that was just to, to put some tape around here to keep it from going that far. And now the, the jaw has been 100% um, reliable for me. So if you have that problem, and, and the other thing is with these gears, um, the replacement gear that Marco Specialty sells um, does not mesh properly, at least on my machine. Um, I, I don't know if the mold was incorrect or what happened, but I have bought two brand new sector gears from Marco's and they do not work on the machines. Um, neither this machine nor Funhouse. <clears throat> so I had to use the original gear and then I just fixed that one with a little bit of tape. But here's the lock mechanism you see here. It's quite um, complicated for uh, Ted. And this is where the balls are stored if you shoot back where the um, spinner is um, in the back left corner. Um, the balls that come out of this lock are ejected there where the spinner is. So they'll come in here through his mouth, down here, and then they, they, they line up here inside this uh, trough. And then there's two coils here. There's a coil here that obviously shoots them out, right? Shoots them up into the lane. And then this coil here will, um, it's like, a, a, it's like a, a gate, it's like a knife, and it will come in and it'll, and it'll separate the balls so that this is only firing one ball at a time. Uh, this piece here broke on me and I replaced it um, I couldn't find a replacement part. I actually made one at work um, out of a piece of hard plastic that I had. Um, and uh, and it's worked just fine. I've had it in there for maybe a year. So 
all in all, pretty reliable. Um, just that, that one broken part was the only thing I had wrong. And, um, you know, the other issue that people tend to have with this machine are these, um, these eddy current or these eddy boards, uh, the boards for the eddy uh, sensors that are in front of Red and Ted's uh, either mouth or the bulldozer. Actually, Ted has two of them. He has one in front of the bulldozer blade and then he has one in front of his mouth. And then Red just has one in front of her mouth. But they are all controlled by these boards that you see here. And these boards have a small little potentiometer on them. And you can adjust those potentiometers to adjust the sensitivity. So actually right now I have a problem with this game where the bulldozer blade will come up and down on its own because that is set a little bit too sensitive. So that board there on the left hand side is the one that I'll need to adjust uh, you know, to fix that problem. And that's a pretty common issue. A lot of people have it and you just have to get in here and you know, a little, uh, little, little screwdriver right there on that board where that black potentiometer is. That's what you got to do. So a uh, pretty complicated game. Again, 1994. Uh, there's a lot of coils in this game and a lot going on under the play field. Um, it might be as complicated or more complicated than Twilight Zone was. So um, um, the flippers are uh, not rebuilt yet. I didn't, I didn't do anything to these flippers. They weren't in that bad of a shape uh, when I got them. And, um, you know, maybe eventually I'll rebuild those. But, yeah, just wanted to show you what the underside of it looks like and uh, we'll get the play field back down and we'll uh, show you the gameplay. All right, well, let's see if we can put up a decent game. See if I can even reach the flipper buttons. Time to go to work. Let's fire that thing up. Here's a two ball multi ball. Rep reminiscent of Whirlwind. And you got to shoot it up into the left lock there. Or what they call the bunker. Ah. Say pretty lucky there. So the ball's over here on this side. You're in the flying rocks mode. Try to get it in one of those one of those three uh, three holes there. Hey, that was lucky. Mm. 
So that was a problem with my game there. I don't know if you noticed, but all three of the balls came out of the lock here uh, before they should have. I think maybe I have a sensor issue or I'm not sure what happened there, but sometimes my game will do that. It'll, it'll kick out the balls for no reason. See, I locked the ball now. It gave me another one because it realizes that the lock is empty now. There should be two balls in that lock. There we go. So we should get a two-ball multi-ball now. And immediately I drained one. I can restart the multi-ball by shooting the left lock there. Mm. There we go. Okay, so we got to restart the multi-ball. And immediately I drained. Yeah, we're in Denver now. So we got to shoot that uh, left ramp. Not that, not the lock, but the ramp. Right there. Okay, we're in the souvenir bunker. Sorry, you can't see the, uh, it's asking me if I wanna buy a cowboy hat. So you can use points to buy souvenirs. Yeah, so I bought a cowboy hat. Ah. Okay, that was ball one. And we're at, um, got an extra ball here. So, we're at a 386 million on ball one, not too bad for me. Um, so we're trying to progress across the country and um, I have the new ROM in it, the Soren ROM. Um, or excuse me, not the Soren ROM, it's just the, the new ROM developed by Bally Williams, but uh, it randomizes what city you're on. So you have to complete a certain number of them here in the, in the country before you can get to the West Coast. And that's ultimately your goal is to get to the West Coast. Um, so right now we gotta, if we were to dr drop it into the hole, we'd start Ohio. Um, and if you hit the uh, slingshots or the pop bumpers, I believe it changes it. Ah, I get the ball save, hopefully. Yeah, I got the ball save. This game's got a really uh, liberal ball save on it. Yeah. Okay, so we're still at Monday. Let's see if we can move move towards Friday again. Hmm.
Okay, we're back in the souvenir bunker and it's asking us if we want the treasure map. It's 10 million points. So, when you buy souvenirs, if you get to Albuquerque, you can trade your souvenirs with an Indian there. And some of the souvenirs, you can, you can earn more points than you sold them for. Ah. Okay, we got a 35 million um, um, bonus on that, so we're at 476 million here, and we're on ball two. Oh, we got to move through. Uh, we got to move through Friday. Friday again. Now we're in Butte. We got to shoot underground into the tunnels. We got an extra ball. Mm. Okay, we got the special. We got another extra ball. And um, we got a 72 million point bonus on that ball. Because we had a 3x multiplier here. Bridge outs light your, lights your bonus, so when you shoot that left ramp there once, it'll say danger bridge out. You shoot it again, you get, you'll get you increase your bonus. So I'm up to almost 600 million now. Okay, we're going to start Dallas. Another 72 million. And each of those souvenirs, when you when you drain a ball, you get points for each of those souvenirs that you collect times your bonus. So it is uh, beneficial to get some of those souvenirs. Even though it cost me 10 million for that cowboy hat, I earned 30 million each time I drained a ball. So you end up it ends up working out in your favor. So it's Wednesday here. Okay, I get the bridge out. There you go, we got our bonus up to 2x. Ah. So we're getting 37 million times two is 74, so another 74 million. My highest is 3.3 billion. I'm at 812 million now. I don't, I don't know how far we're gonna get here. Let's see if we can get to the multi-ball again. We gotta lock the second ball here. Ah, no.
Mm. Yeah. Well, I thought I was going to get further. I had a good start there, but unfortunately, uh, I couldn't really reach the machine that well. So that's my excuse anyway. But I hope you enjoy it. It's, it's a really good game.